Hello, my name is Nick. Uh, today I'm gonna to just go through a, a quick overview of the Roof Wizard software um, for those new users um, that haven't used it or seen it before. Um, the first thing you'll notice when you open up the software um, is this empty white screen, which is your workspace. Uh, and then the menus along the top and the left hand side. Uh, you'll also get a, a little box down the bottom right that is the applicant instructor window. Um, you don't have to leave this open, you can close it, um, but pretty much it, it's just a little helper um, so that if you do come across a function of the software that you have no idea how it works, it'll give you a few tips on, on what to do with that. Um, I'm just gonna close that for now, but if you do close it and you want it back up, just go up the top to help and then instructor, click on that and it'll open it straight back up. But we'll close that for now. Uh, so if we go to our main menu, um, it shows sort of the process of, of any estimate really. Um, start off is constructing, uh, that is creating the outline from either the eaves or the walls. Uh, then modifying the roof once we've got it, uh, putting dormers on uh, and any other sort of cutouts, atriums, that sort of thing on there. Um, then any wall cladding that you're doing um, will be based on those initial wall measurements that we that we input uh, and then check in the job so we want to make sure we compare this to uh, site measures or architectural plans uh, and we can do that by clicking a few buttons checking our hip lengths valley lengths ridge lengths uh, fascia gutter lengths areas pitches all that sort of stuff uh, we do once we've modeled the roof and then the hard part's essentially done, then we can apply our materials. So whether you're doing tile, shingles, uh, metal panels, flashings, accessories, the whole lot, uh, we'll do under cover. Uh, estimate is where we apply all our, our panels, block cutting, auto blocking, whatever you like. Uh, and then reporting, which is um, where we'll just essentially hit a button and print uh, as many different reports as we like. It could be uh, flashing panel reports, it could be reports for our supplier, for our installers. Um, really, you can customize those uh, to your heart's content and put any information out of the software automatically into those rep reports. Um, and, and there's the estimate done. So we'll get started. We'll go up the top here to construct roof. Whether you use the top menu or the left, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, it's just whether you prefer um, sort of visual cues in the, the picture menu on the left or you're a, a more of a reader. Um, I use a bit of both. But to get started, we'll go to track outline and we'll get our, our box to start off with. When you're entering your measurements, um, you can type in, you know, R for right, L for left, D for down, and so on instead of actually clicking them on the right hand side just because it's more efficient. So I might say, let's say I'm reading off the plans, for example, I'll go right, I uh, know 5,600 down, I don't know, let's go 2,600. We'll go right another 2,500 and down, let's just go down three meters. And keep in mind, all this is in millimeters. And if we do put a, an error in there, a typo, we can hit step back that will take off the last measurement we put in. Um, and if we hit enter or insert, we can continue on, put that back in. Um, let's go left by, I don't know, let's go left 10 meters and up. That's what we do there. We'll go three and a half on that measurement. Now that we're at the last two measurements of the roof, um, what we can do here is hit close and then close square. You can also type um, C into the distance um, box and just hit enter as well. Um, but what that's gonna do is put the last two measurements in for us. That's useful because we can compare that to our architectural plans or site measure. Um, and just check that's, that's correct. If that's correct, we can move on. If it's not, it could be that the plans are incorrect um, or you've had a typo in the previous measurements. Just step back until you correct that measurement uh, and continue on. So we'll hit finish on that. Then we get our roof defaults box. So we put in things like whether it's a pitch roof, or whether it's a, a single slope or, or a skillion roof, um, what the roof material is, we're gonna do metal in this case. The story, that comes into play when you're doing one cutouts 
for the actual model of the roof, uh, as well as things like labor and, and, and the pricing side of things later on. Um, pitch will make 22 and a half. Uh, we can also measure the pitch. If you click these three dots, you've got a few options there for measuring as well. But we know it's gonna be 22 and a half for this job. Eve overhang, 450, that's fine. Gable, I'm gonna put 600, and I'll show you why later on. Uh, it'll make it easier to point out. Eve height, we'll put in there. That's good for also, that's good for measuring down pipes and difference in Eve height when intersecting different roofs. Uh, rafter spacing, calculating things like screws, Eve type phase, you gotta. So, hit okay. It shows our wall lines as well as our eave lines. Now I'm gonna define a vertical plane, which is where we put a vertical plane at the end of a roof, which makes it a gable. So let's make that left to one a gable. I'll click left click it. The prompt area up the top will always show us what the software is wanting us to do. So if you ever get stuck and you're not sure what to do, check that prompt area. Chances are it's gonna be telling you what it wants from you. In this case, we're defining, uh, we're locating walls to define as vertical planes, which is our gable end. So right click on there when we're finished selecting and it's gonna ask, um, is this the line you want? We'll click yes. Uh, and you can see now our left-hand side has increased to 600 overhang because that's what we defined in that previous box. Um, and just for fun, we'll make this a 1200 overhang on here. Um, barge lines, don't worry about that for now if you're just starting. Then we'll hit continue. The roof will then become uh, a 3D model and it'll ask if we want to save. Whenever you start a new job, the software's going to ask you to save just so you don't lose it. Um, so now we want to put in file name and model name. So most for most people, they'll put the something like the builder's name in the model in the file name. Uh, and then under the model name, things like site address, you can also do site address as the file name and then like unit one, unit two, unit three for the model name. We're just gonna say test job one and we'll call it model one. Hit okay. So now our model saved at, as well as being generated. Now we can just have a look in our isometric view. This model's now in 3D, so we can go ahead and check things like Fascia gutter lengths, eave lengths, um, lengths up the slope out area for each plane, uh, things like pic pictures as well. Um, and let's say we wanted to do something fun under mod roof, we can do that. Or if this is the roof that's finished, it's what it's on the plans, we can then go and cover and apply our materials. Um, so using the software really just makes the, um, the modeling part and the, the estimating part easy. Uh, especially once you've got all your materials defined. Um, but that's sort of the hard part, um, modeling your roof. And if you're new to the software, there's a few shortcuts that are worth knowing. Um, one of them is if you do get stuck in the model, whether that be really, really zoomed out or let's say really, really zoomed in, if you double click the middle mouse button, that will zoom fit, which you can also do through the top menu. Uh, but what that's gonna do is just grab the model and just make it fit the screen. Um, so if you do ever get stuck, that is really useful. Another shortcut worth knowing is if you're in the isometric view, or any view for that matter, but it's most most useful in the isometric view, hold down control and the middle mouse button and you can rotate around uh, the roof. So if, if you've got something funky going on in one corner and you wanna get, get a better look at it, just zoom out a little bit, hold control and the middle mouse button, and you'll be able to spin the, the roof model around. And again, we'll zoom fit, which is double clicking the middle mouse button. And the last shortcut I'll show you is, let's say we go to, to track outline, and we have our, our window popped up here. Let's say this window is just really far off the screen, or it's stuck behind another window, or if you've got two monitors and you might not see the dialog box on the other screen, hit F4, and no matter what window it is within the software, uh, if there is a window available and you hit F4, it's gonna dart that, that dialog box just straight back to the middle of whichever screen the software's on. So if the software sort of seems frozen or it's not you know behaving or you can't find the dialog box after you click the menu 
chances are it's probably just on another another screen or another area of the screen just hit f4 it'll duck back and you'll be able to find it now one more thing to note if we do get a dialog box that is a yes no cancel option uh, instead of moving your mouse all the way to wherever that is on the screen if you just any click anywhere on the screen uh, the left mouse button that correlates to the yes button same with the middle mouse button that's going to correlate to the no button and the right click is going to correlate to cancel so no matter what uh, where our mouse is on the screen if we just right click it'll cancel and if we just right click again it's going to cancel again uh, and that's just more efficiency sake um, no matter what you're doing if you need to hit yes or no or or cancel quickly um, just look at your mouse and that's what it, it correlates to one more thing I will note uh, before we finish up is if you are looking to using the software full-time and being efficient at it you're gonna learn it uh, you're gonna use it for your business uh, get yourself a second screen it's so much more efficient and that way you can have your your plans on one screen and the software on the other so you're not just having to flick back and forth between the plans and the software on the same screen you can look to your left have your plans there and then type your measurements in on the right screen where the software is it's just it's miles more efficient um, and you can thank me later but that's basically it um, the best way to learn the software is of course the online training but this should get you started getting your head around the software creating a few basic models uh, and if you do get stuck on anything or you have questions on um, how the software works or you want to see a demo of the software give us a call shoot us an email or message us on social media um, and we can set up a time and go through the software with you or answer your questions um, so yeah that's basically it as far as tips and tricks for new users um, but apart from that just get cracking on it you know use the software learn it um, and you'll be amazed at how accurate and spot-on your takeoffs can get um, so yeah enjoy cheers